You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. Reaching all the way back to 1948, Fate Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown. All of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition. Here is your host of Fate Radio, Kat Hobson. Hello there and welcome to Paranormal Experience Radio. That was the wrong intro. You're absolutely correct. We will fix that later. But I am so very excited to be hosting this show tonight. I do want to, before we get started, reach out to the people in in Florida and especially those people who are still there who did not evacuate and just I'm so sorry I can't say enough how terrible that is because I know when my town was hit by Ivan I didn't even live there and it was hideous please know that we continue to hold you in our prayers We will continue to get you the things that you need. For those who are displaced and are not going to be allowed back, I really think that that was a good decision on your part because there's not going to be any power, any water, nothing that will make this a comfortable experience for anyone. So stay in place, stay safe, and let people help you. People want to help you. So... We love you, we're praying for you, and we're sending y'all everything we can to get you taken care of. That being said, I am so excited. I have a wonderful guest tonight. It's Jeanette Lucas. She is, I guess, a forensic psychic. She aids in all kinds of work. She is very diverse. She is also a dowser. And she uses dowsing with spirits as well and and locating people who are damaged. She also is an author. She is a speaker. And she is a pretty fascinating person from all that I've gathered. And I'm excited to have this conversation so I can learn more. Jeanette, welcome to Paranormal Experienced. Well, just one second. I do not know why this does this all the time, but we're going to fix it. We have a little issue. It's not a big deal. And I just, it is completely an operator issue. So we are good. And how long have you known that you were a psychic to start things off? Did you find this as a child? Did you find it as you matured i i found out when i was a kid my father used to take us for drives in the car Um, i'm one of five and he would take us for drives and say lay down on the bottom of the car and in a station wagon of course so you're laying down like a little kid so you're about i was about five years old and he said tell me what you see so we're going to drive through neighborhoods and you tell me what you're going to see and you couldn't look out the window and You had to say, I feel like we're in a wealthier neighborhood. I feel like we're in the poorer neighborhood. I feel like we're in the ghetto. I feel like we're, and he goes, so he'll say, what's the name of the street you're on? Or, so it was like a constant testing. And he was always worried worried one of us was going to be abducted because there's five of us. And so that's the beginning of the beginning. And then it, it moved on from there. Then I found out about dowsing at about age seven. So that's just the scratching the surface for a kid. Um, You know, you don't have to do that. There are other angles now that I'm older, what I do with my kids. And I just tell people, you can use your dreams or you can do the same thing. Take a drive and and say, what do you feel? What do you sense? And um, I, I loved it, but every child is different in development. And there you have it. Well, I find it interesting. Why was he so concerned about abduction? 
Well, I lived in the right down the street from DC, and every time you turned around, it was you know a kid was being abducted, or an adult was being abducted. And 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 back then we didn't have the computer, we didn't have the TV, and so my father was a little bit on the paranoid side because he had served in the military, and he knew that these things could happen. And that how is he going to control five little kids at once? I mean, there are five of us in four years. And it's it's really tough to monitor your kids, monitor their friends, monitor their safety, monitor your lifestyle. And so he was very determined to um, be, I, you know, what do they call him? Um, I, I don't want to call him a papa bear, but he was a papa bear combination of you know, like a bird swarming over his five kids. And then at the same time, he was running a business and then had another business, and another business. It was really challenging. So I think he was concerned about all of it. And his plate was just way too full. So he was just saying, if this happens, you know, pay attention to this in case you get dropped off somewhere. But I mean, D- D.C. was still a big area, even though it was little towns all over. Like we lived in Arlington. Then we lived in Falls Church. Um, then we lived in nearby Dunloring. I mean, it's all surrounded. It's right down the street from D.C. So he, he definitely had a super cautious mentality. Well, I guess that that is something that stood him well. And stood you I think well. so. I think so. I mean, we're all here today. Not <laughs> Typically, statistically, which I'm very, very, I tell people I'm very much a black and white person. What are the facts? And typically, if you have five kids, you're going to lose one out of five. If it's not to drugs, it's to a missing person. If it's not that, it's a car wreck. And all of us are still alive. And not, not to say we haven't had a lot of car wrecks. <laughs> well, I understand that because I have children and we've experienced that. And it mm-hmm. was... It was quite alarming and scary, and I'm very fortunate mm-hmm. that they're all still here. So yeah, yeah, I agree with your dad. <laughs> mm-hmm. You 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 do definitely have to look at the statistics on, you know, crime doesn't have to be, um, you know, I stole your purse. It could be I stole your kid, <laughs> and and they don't the the rarity of coming home is minimal, so you have to be on it right away, and if you have to teach your kids how to protect yourself or how to talk to the abductor or how to react if you get locked in a room or how to do this or how to do that. Um, it's, it's a earlier combo of safety security and, and you have to learn how to escape. And that's, you know, we're in a very unusual time frame. We are. And, and, um, it, but then again, it's highly publicized now. So that's why I think my my job as a forensic dowser and psychic is very controversial because I'll get a phone call and somebody will say, what do you think? Are they alive or dead? And I'll say, oh, they're alive. And people will say, no way. There's no way. And down the road, they find out they're alive or somebody's been abducted. And I said, it's not good. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, and, and I'm the one bringing the bad news. So I'm the bad guy. I find that to be true with Mm -hmm. almost every case. I I know people who are brilliant and gifted psychics who will not touch that Mm -hmm. because they're, they're the bad guy. They're perceived as maybe being complicit in the case or, Mm -hmm. you know, having something else. And yeah, that's just terrible. Mm -hmm. Well, I definitely call it the double edged sword. I mean, a, a lot of times I'll tell people, you know, bring the police in, let's talk with the police. And tonight I'll give you a couple example cases where it turned out great, um, great in the sense that it got solved or great in the sense that there was cooperation. Um, sometimes you can have cooperation with the family in the beginning and then other times absolutely no cooperation the other 50% of the time because the family is just shutting down emotionally because they're so traumatized. Or you have total cooperation in the beginning from the police and then they say, uh, no, we don't want to do this. Or because they dealt with 2,000 psychics. Or because there's too much publicity. So, And media can be your friend, uh, your ally, or your enemy. I mean, it's really, it's a a game changer. This work is definitely a game changer. You know, I, I agree. I have seen 
I have seen cases where they just assume that it's family members off the bat mm-hmm. because best access. But then again, <clears throat> I've seen hideous cases where it was family members. Mm-hmm. And you think, you know, there were two instances in Mississippi, the, the last one just this week, of babies being cooked by grandparents, by grandparents. And it's hard to, yeah. I can't yeah. fathom that. I cannot fathom that. And, you know, more than politics, more than, you know, yang yang back and forth, more than, you know, he said, she said, that level of evil is what concerns me for our world, not just our country, but our world, because that is, that is bad. That is well, the worst. Mm-hmm. It is the worst. The only thing that bothers me is that some of this is drug related. And even though it's a grandparent, as I say, trust me on that one, you don't have to be 10 to take drugs or 20 or 30 or 50. It covers every age. I mean, I have just been shocked at the fact that a grandparent is taking meth and they do not remember what they did. And and they can't fathom what they did. I have a relative who was beaten t- to a pulp. And three days later, she got to go to court and she had to talk to the guy who beat the ever-loving out of her. Broke her ribs, broke bones in her eyes, and he burst out in tears. He, he was not on drugs. He was drunk. And that big difference between meth and drinking but the tragedy is, is that he had to face what he did to his girlfriend who he had planned on marrying. And she couldn't marry him because you got drunk once and this is what you did. And the equation is over. You're done. There's no moving forward. And it's really amazing because he did end up getting married and never touched the other girl. But what he did with my friend was... I had I had the pictures and I I just it's it's just hard to fathom. Um, regarding the grandparent, um, it could have been drugs. Um, unfortunately, we have a couple. Unfortunately, we have a couple other things factors involved with with stabbings and that kind of thing. A um, not just anger but terrible mental health issues. And I I think the big thing if I had to say one of my t- top platforms. I mean I have like three f- platforms is mental health. And unfortunately, some people don't have the money to take anxiety pills or they don't have money for bipolar disorder or they don't have money for schizophrenia. And some of these people, once they get in meds, they found out what they did later and they say, say, I I don't remember that. It was like I was in my body, but I was outside of my body. Have you heard that before? I have. I've actually heard someone say that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't me. I swear to God, but it was, but it wasn't. Um, I've heard people say it before where they shot somebody and they said, I wouldn't have done that. Now, some people just boldface lie. I get it. You know, that that's understandable. But that's why we have detectives who their specialty is interrogation. Mm-hmm. But then you have people that um, they do not. Cops just don't include the mental health background or problem. So it's that one I would bet. There was a daycare worker in Chicago stabbing babies. And I thought, A, it's. It vengeance. Um, it, it of course it's evil because you're talking about the innocent of the innocent, but it's also the fact that um, she couldn't get mental health help. Um, she could have been an indentured servant. I understand, to my knowledge, she was Asian. I could be wrong, but there's so many complications now in uh, crime. I've, I talked to a friend of mine. Um, who worked for the feds. And he said, you know, Jeanette, crime used to be easy. You go in and typically if somebody gets abducted or murdered, it's typically by a family member or one of their neighbors, somebody in this little radius, you know, right there and at at home, near home. And he goes, not anymore. (laughs) It could be random. It could be just off the charts. Uh, Somebody felt like shooting somebody today. And I thought, oh, that's great. So it's harder to solve a crime um, than it used to be. And then, of course, we have the new drug system of, I think I'll take somebody else's drugs and get so screwed up, I have no clue what I'm doing. So we have, a, we have a I, lot I have of battles. A, I have a real, I, I'm i so odd. <laughs> I really am so odd. I have such an issue with you know, personal responsibility. 